I've been randomly, you know, ran on random days. I'll check up on one of my style icons, right, from the early 2000s era of street style. You know, back in the day when people used to want to get photo, uh, take, have their picture taken by the Scott Schumann, the sartorialist, and he's featured on his blog. Or sometimes if you're lucky enough, you get it featured on his little column here on Vogue, right? It was a really, really good era um, when street style was actually cool and interesting and it wasn't just, you know loads of cringe and when street style it actually involved people who worked in the industry or people that were actually i don't know part of the scene right not just influencers or or, or just clout chasers for the most part influencers is a bad term it's not isn't is the wrong um term to use because i don't think it's a bad thing maybe just you know the clout chaser person the person that knew you know there was some cultural clout to be um to be uh, extracted from just standing around at shows um, now it's so, so it's not so fun now like the street style stuff you only have to look at some of the slideshow collections they put together when um, we have London Fashion Week you know there's not there's not a lot of really cool interest in personal style just loads of really young people trying to look wacky and get their fits off and it is what it is but it's not fun but that early 2000s era of street style was so cool man um, and Lapo Elkan is one of my favourites um, he is the a heir of the Fiat Empire I think via his great grandmother so he's just, you know, a, a quintessential Italian playboy um, who dresses in this really overtly dandyish sort of like way that kind of reminds me of some of my Congolese uncles that I have. But, in, you know, obviously done with a little bit of a European chic towards it. It's not so shiny as my Congolese uncles would wear. But I love the fact that most of these uh, blazer jackets had these massive lapels on them, usually double breasted. I love the fact that he always color blocks his, you know, his outerwear. Or oh, sorry, the upper is always massive color box, and then it sort of goes wild down below. Very easy style, um, you know, the, per the 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 kind of minimal personal grooming, which is kind of a feature of, you know, Mediterranean masculinity, right? There's this kind of like play between like the rough face and the kind of like you know what's it called a six o'clock shadow whatever it's called stub on his beard the hair's a bit unkempt but then he's got a few buttons undone his shirt than he should have and then of course white pants with no socks and loafers so i love that duality that you see with those kind of dudes um now you see those stiffs at petty omo who look you know who look fucking ridiculous but back in the day people like Lapo Elkin were a real style inspiration to me you know I'd kind of peruse some of the stuff even though I didn't wear any of the stuff back then I just like to see how he put his stuff together this is him looking a bit chunky then in here but yeah he looks awesome man I'm a big big fan um of his style in general and he's a weird one because he doesn't even have a social so all these pictures have actually been taken by actual photographers right paparazzi pictures obviously from his mainland in Italy but mostly pictures from paps or pictures from you know I don't know pictures from friends with cameras and shit but they have you know he's not been taking any pictures from you know just standing in front of a mirror or with a tripod these are all things of him out and about doing his thing so which is cool to see right so anyway i check his i check his i check out um what he's moving so from here to here you know right just to kind of get an idea what's happening and i stumbled upon this oh this is one of my favorites actually from him this whole cream outfit yeah, so beautiful it reminds me of one of those looks from the recent Balenciaga show but of course it was a way 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 bigger jacket but you know you gotta love the hair the glasses the, the tortoise shell glasses right the fact that he's got a polo um underneath his blazer jacket and not a quintessential dress shirt it's just oh, so good anyway so I'm a big fan of Lapa Alcan, as you can hear me profusely um, wanking over the microphone from this dude. So I stumbled upon this story on a new post. It just made me laugh out loud. And this, this headline is as uh, <laughs> funny as it sounds. Ex, ex of Fiat Hire sorry, says he was sexually assaulted at a transgender orgy. There's so many things going on in there that it's just hard to kind of figure out. So number one, I had no idea that my guy was gay or bi or whatever i just assumed he was a bit of a ladies man i guess that's my um that's my fault in that regard i just assumed you know italian playboy that you know is a high is a hair or he's gonna is next in line at fear i don't know whatever you call it he's got a lot of money right you just assume he just you know would be swimming in you know dark-haired olive skin women but you just never assumed he'd be 
a gay dude who'd obviously be into you know, a particular looking kind of gay guy as well um a black guy you know fairly clean shaven um you don't really you wouldn't expect them to be in the same scene that's what i mean right because usually if you do see gay guys together from what i've seen anyway there is some kind of link in terms of like what scenes they're in right maybe stylistically or culturally there might be a little link that they're kind of involved in if they're involved in some sort of kind of quote unquote subculture but you wouldn't think these two would be friends let alone lovers right these two pictures here but it's such a wild story let me read this it's from the new york post it says the following it says an ex-boyfriend of the fiat uh, Sion Lapo Elkan claims he was sexually assaulted and left with severe emotional distress following a cocaine filled transgender orgy that spun out of control. Travis London, which is probably, you know, one of the best names ever, <laughs> said former lover Elkan, an Italian wild child who once faked his own kidnapping, story from another day, uh, to milk his wealthy family for cash, persuaded him to participate in group sex with two trans prostitutes, one of whom aggressively <laughs> attempted to bed London by pulling him down and accosting him. This sounds like a story you read in like the Daily Mirror, you know, like, you know, or oh, the sun back in the day. Um, Elkan bonks you know, transgender prostitutes in an orgy, for, you know, those kind of like, because they, they loved using the word bonk for, instead of a substitute for sex, which I didn't really understand. We all know what bonk means, but hey. Um, Elkan 41 then tried to silence him over the botched birthday gift in Milan, July 2018, according to London's 10 million Brooklyn federal lawsuit. That is insane. But just imagine Alapo Elkan thought it was a good idea to give his boyfriend at the time a birthday present and guess what it was he without his knowledge he invited around two transgender prostitutes who this guy had probably no idea were going to come around probably hadn't seen him before probably his first time even finding out Alapo was into transgenders in the first place right that's also a bit of a shock all happening on your birthday that has to be up there was one of the best worst gifts in the world and imagine it also if if you add to the fact that maybe Travis isn't even into drugs. So imagine it's your birthday. He racks up lines. Um, he then he after he's done with you, he then goes and calls up these two transgender prosies. You're wondering where you got the numbers from. You're wondering how do you fucking know them? It's just so many questions you probably have running in your head. But that ten million dollar suit, oof, congrats to come up. This is continues. Uh, the article says here the former Bew says he and Elkan had just had unprotected sex when his still naked lover made a phone call in Portuguese a language London doesn't speak so this Lapa Elkan speaks English Italian and Portuguese top boy um, suddenly two transsexual prostitutes and their madame showed up London charges in a legal purpose London refused the menage um Madame Jatois, but Elkham had sex with one of the prostitutes and gave them both cocaine as London. An interior designer looked on in shock. <laughs> Just imagine the scene. Just imagine the scene, man. This dude, right, that's wearing these amazing double breasted, you know, suits, ensembles, right? Great tortoise shells, glasses, his hair swept to one side always seems to have the right shoes on his pants seem to drop at the right length towards his shoes just a clean cut gentleman is you know essentially ruining somebody that he cares about really a lot birthday for what what was the point of this come on it continues here it says um uh, that's when the second prostitute apparently aggressively in endeavoured to force London to have sexy charges. London thirty said he eventually fled Elkan's home. I love the word fled. It always makes me um, imagine some sort of damsel in distress running down the street, sand shoes, screaming hysterically, or slipping here, slipping out into the wind. Right, that sort of thing. Um, Elkan, whose grandfather Gianni Angelini was once worth an estimated 3.1 billion, quickly began a high pressure campaign to secure some, uh, London silence, even paying the prostitutes to take down their social media profiles, London claims. So yeah, Elkan got, was able to get them to delete their, the prosies' profiles. What's that going to do to anything? Anyway, um, Elkan later apologized, begging London to keep quiet to avoid a scandal after the death of a former Fiat CEO, Sergio. Marcio, Marcioni Elkan once denied his long time relationship with London, belittling him as a stalker after London tweeted about their romance. So they've been together for a while 2014, 2018. Okay, that's no laughing matter, man. That's really fucked up if he did do this. Bloody hell. 
Um, at, the, at the time, London was a chef. He came to El Khan denial of their affair, created a backlash that cost him as his culinary career. The Milan uh, assault was the last, latest in a series of abusive, manipulative, demand, demeaning, and harmful episodes initiated by El Khan during the course of an abusive multi year relationship, or sorry, courtship, London alleges. London has ample evidence of abuse from pictures, texts, emails, and other information, says his lawyer Christopher Martin told the Post. A rep from Elkan slammed the basis of that lawsuit, claiming London has stalked Elkan for years. London has, fir- has filed the lawsuit in an attempt to embarrass Lapo, whose salacious made up the details. He defend he will defend against his strongly spokesman. Marcia Horowitz said and I, w- I did have a little check up on uh, Travis of London Instagram page um, pr- prior to recording this podcast and it does look like he got the bag from the looks of it you know he he looks very very secure I'm not sure if he got an out of court settlement I have no idea it's not my business but <clears throat> let's say he looks really really happy and he's got a cute dog but yeah this Lapa Oakham story is mad I had no idea this part of his personality existed. Again, I was just a fan of the fits. I thought he dressed impeccably. I thought he carried himself well in pictures. It's always weird. It's always hard to look cool when you're walking in the picture sometimes. Your arms can hang in a weird way. You might have a weird slouch in you, but he always looks effortlessly cool. And then I was like, hold on, let me click on news. And then suddenly this, this story pops up. Epic stuff. Epic, epic, epic stuff. Hope you enjoyed that one. Let's move on.